Welcome back to the McCann Dogs podcast. Uh, today we are going to be discussing a topic that may be uh, a little bit emotional for some of our listeners. And uh, both Sh- Shannon and I think it's a really important conversation to have to uh, to help you make a, uh, you know, eventually maybe have to make that difficult decision. Um, the topic for today is uh, when is the right time to say goodbye? This is uh, episode 48 of our McCann Dogs podcast. Uh, and with no further ado, I think we're going to get uh, get right into it. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now, Shannon, this topic is... Uh, very near to my heart right now. Um, I, I recently lost a, a dog, and uh, this sort of uh, this sort of prompted, uh, what I believe, this topic to be discussed by you and I. And before we go any further, I want to, if this is your first time listening to us, I want to in- introduce uh, instructor Shannon Viljasu, who's the uh, director of online training at our My Dog Can program. Um, but Shannon, what what prompted you to write this article? Well, like you said, um, you were going through quite a tough time losing one of your dogs over Christmas, and it got me thinking about that question, and um, I'm going to try to make it through this without getting emotional, but I can't promise anything, that's for sure. I I know that it was such a difficult decision and and one that you had to make far too early with this young dog, so that really prompted that question in my head. How do you listen to your head over your heart when it comes to these matters and make that move forward knowing that it's the right choice for the dog. So my therapy is always writing. It always has been. So that prompted me to write this blog post and it's um, it's gotten a lot of emotional response on Facebook and on the other venues that it's gone out on. So I know that it's a very important topic to talk about and it's a very hard one to talk about, but it's so crucial that anybody that is waffling with this decision has some sort of means of support to make the choice and to make the right choice for themselves and for the dog especially. Um, If anyone's kind of wondering where this topic is coming from and uh, you know we haven't really talked about it publicly very much but um, over uh, Christmas we lost our four-year-old border collie Rad who um, he uh, a few months before he started to have some gastric issues um, and uh, we were treating him uh, treating the symptoms when he didn't recover after a couple of rounds of medication we knew that something was up and uh, we took him to a spe- specialist where they uh, <clears throat> they let us they, they did some tests suggested that uh, they'd found something seen a mass inside his uh, colon and they did some tests and we were uh, informed that he had uh, an advanced um, cancer in his uh, bowels and uh, that was certainly challenging to hear and uh, we were we were forced to make a tough decision and i think that's that's sort of what we're going to discuss today is is making that that tough decision um it was certainly it it's funny because it happened over at a time of year you know both a blessing and a curse because it's the only time of year where we have that uh, kind of time off uh, where we aren't teaching for a couple of weeks uh, and we could spend all of our time with uh, with our young border collie uh, it that that was certainly uh, really nice that we could spend so much time with him uh, but the challenge is is that it was over the holiday period where you know you have all the, all of these um these really uh, important events that you, I will forever associate with that experience. And uh, it, it's hard to separate the two. Um, but and just to, anyway, just to bring uh, our listeners up up to speed. Now, I know, Shannon, you and I had talked about, um, uh, you know, a couple of uh, things that, y- that you wanted to talk about from your blog post. And I, I really enjoyed uh, reading this. If you haven't uh, seen Shannon's blog post. I'll, I'll post it in the show notes below. If you're watching this on our YouTube podcast, then I'll post it in the description below. But um, what what sort of things you know were were going through your mind, Shannon? Yeah. So I mean, my own experiences obviously are are very top of mind when it comes to this. And and I thought 
you know, how do you ever know that it's time? I mean, with Rad, it was so sudden. It was so unexpected. What in that situation told you that this was the right choice for him? Like, what were your motivators in knowing that you didn't want to prolong this anymore? Was there any one sort of catalyst or was it just the general emotion? I think uh, in our specific case, and in, 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 in having talked to the specialist, having talked to, uh, you know, our vet, um, we're not alone in having this experience. Um, in our case, Rad was so sick. Um, he was losing weight rapidly. Uh, he had, uh, you know, awful bloody diarrhea. It was just an awful, awful situation. Very uh, clear uh, and obvious symptoms of something or signs of, of something horribly wrong. Um, when we were offered sort of two courses uh, to follow, um, one was to try chemotherapy. Uh, the specialist said that um, she'd had a, recently had a dog in with a very similar uh, presentation or, or uh, you know, um, symptoms and signs and uh, she, that dog didn't do well on chemotherapy. Um, the alternative in, in that her, her thought was that it could prolong his life, um, that it could in her uh, very specific um, prognosis was, you know, he's a 50% chance of living 500 more days. Um, but the alternative was to put him on a different medication um, to that will very quickly put the cancer into remission for a very short period of time. There's no, uh, there's, it's not going to stop the cancer, but it will uh, stall the cancer until, you know, it, uh, it, it begins to uh, progress again, but for a very short period of time. And our vet had warned us that a lot of people, when they follow this, um, this uh, treatment, think for for a moment that things are fine again that your dog is well again that you've maybe there was a misdiagnosis and that is exactly what happened for kale and i there were times we so we start we started the alternative treatment knowing that rad uh was so sick and uh we didn't want to put him through the illness the uh you know uh the the unlikely odds that it would fix anything uh we wanted to give him the best life we possibly could and knowing that the for that time of year that we could really make every day count with him was really really important um well go ahead sorry i was just gonna say i know that with that protocol and with what you were saying that that a lot of people think it's the dog is fine they've been misdiagnosed i know that you guys went through that emotion as well you and kale both i heard you both express that same thing so what were you thinking along those lines when that was happening it was it was really challenging to me i mean having a very spending 20 years in pre-hospital emergency care and you know uh, being Having dealt with a lot of end of life scenarios with uh, with people, and you know, having lots of patients who were going through these end of life um, experiences, I had a very, I, I mean, we always want to hold on to the that some hope that maybe this is the one case where they are wrong, um, and that was certainly in the back of my mind. But um, for me, I just, I, I certainly. Uh, thought that that probably wasn't the case and i really want i really knew that uh the clock was ticking and that's uh you know i often sort of uh have that sense uh with everyday life through my experiences uh in, in my other uh work i know that time the time our time on this earth is very valuable and um i really wanted to make every day with rad the best it could possibly be uh so I, it was hard. It was hard to not think that, to think he's better. I mean, he could, because he really was, he went back to his old self. His diet was great or his appetite was great. Uh, you know, all of those uh, symptoms he was having before were gone and he wanted to play. He wanted to chase and herd the other dogs. He wanted to, uh, you know, play Frisbee and fetch. And he just, he, he, he was the rad that we had had for four and a half years leading up to his, uh, when his uh, symptoms began a few months before. So although I, I really, uh, there were times when I thought, geez, maybe this is the one case where he, 
they were wrong, that he he isn't as sick as they thought. Um, in the back of my mind, I really understood that I could. it would be a disservice to him to uh, start to think that. I really needed to make sure that um, that uh, I, I cherished every moment. And then I went out of my way to make every day great for him. Then I went out of my way to spend more time with him, to do more things with him. And uh, I, didn't want, I didn't want to look back and think, oh, I wish I'd done more. And that, that is such a nice way to hold those last days and those last memories, I think, too, is being able to see him in a very healthy light and know that he really, really enjoyed that last little bit of time that he had. So I can imagine that with that and with that spurt of, of seemingly good health that he showed you near the end, I can imagine it was really, really hard to be thinking about what was coming in the um, in the immediate future. And I was wondering at what point did you know for certain that euthanasia would be the, the route that you would go rather than waiting and seeing if he went naturally on his own? I think we always hope that when we have a dog that's really sick, uh, or a dog that's, uh, you know, really old and they're having health issues, our greatest wish is that they'll just pass away in their sleep and we won't be forced to make that decision. That would be, I don't know how many times I've thought that where the, our dog has just reached their end of days and uh, it would be so much easier on us and, and we think Literally. on them. Uh, but I knew that... Um, I knew how sick he was before we started, we started this treatment and, uh, he, he wasn't able to live a life where he could thrive. He couldn't eat. He, sp he would spend 25 minutes, um, squatting outside and it looked very uncomfortable. He was lethargic. I just didn't, I didn't want him to have to go through that. It, it looked so uncomfortable and knowing how bright he normally was, how energetic and enthusiastic he was, uh, I didn't want him to have to, to, to live what I knew would be his last days feeling like that. So it was really hard to, um, I mean, it was, an, it's funny because it's, it's the only decision to make. We balance in our mind. He's like, what, what, what can I do uh, in this situation? When is the right time? And, um, you know, in my case, specifically in our case, the right time was when we knew he wasn't himself, when he wasn't able to, uh, when he wasn't able to be enthusiastic. And when he, when he began to have the signs of, 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 um, you know, dysfunction that, uh, that really made him feel sick. I didn't want his last few days to feel like he was sick. I wanted, and I've, you know, as I just to sort of restate, I wanted, I wanted him to, to, to feel like this world and our time together was nothing short of amazing. And, uh, and I'm sure he did. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, it's so funny because, uh, he uh he really meant so much to me and uh to make that decision to make that the, the decision that um we that he had to be euthanized what is so um you know it's such a challenge e even looking back on it, it it's it's a challenging choice to make but uh again in my experience i've seen so many you know, just simply awful things where families deal with their uh family member maybe it's a mother or father maybe it's a daughter or son or could be a brother or sister where they just reach their end of days and they're so sick and it's it's literally because our the patient is so um you know uh unaware and so sick and so uh decreased uh in terms of their state of mind the family is really suffering like really yeah. genuinely suffering and uh with dogs that we we are we can control their suffering and if we can if we can lessen their suffering i think it's really important i think it's really important that i could share those rad rad was was himself absolutely back to normal for a couple of weeks and then we reached the point where he started to get sick again and i wouldn't allow him to uh, suffer 
it, 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 we have this opportunity with dogs and I think it's so vitally important for their sake that we, uh, when, when we know it's time and, and I've stressed the word, no, and you, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's evidence that you feel like it's that you, that you know, it's their time, then you, the difficult decision needs to be made. And it's a lot harder on us, uh, which is probably why people, uh, maybe waits too long. I, I actually heard a really, really interesting thing. Our vet, uh, read us this amazing poem, which I mean, you know, I'm, a, I try to be fairly, uh, non, stoic. Un, yeah, stoic, yeah, stoic in these situations, but, uh, I couldn't help, but, um, but, uh, she had a couple of tears, but she read us this amazing, uh, poem about how important dogs are and that, uh, dogs aren't just a dog. Uh, and then she mentioned something to us that, um, she has a, um, someone who rescues dogs, who is her, uh, pay, or her, uh, customer. Um, and the, the lady had mentioned to our vet and her uh, technician one time that it's uh, it's more important to uh, euthanize a week early uh, than it is to be a week late, and I thought that's such a, a such a clear statement and it's so in I believe it's true, I believe it's yes. true because we we can have this opportunity to make sure our dogs live these incredible lives and uh, that they don't have to suffer and uh, I thought that was a really that that really stuck with me. Absolutely. And that um, that exact sentiment came up on the Facebook post several times, you know, better to be a day early than a minute late, that whole idea. And I think I agree with you 100%. I think that's so true. And that sort of leads me into my next thought. I mean, I know that you were hoping to get more than the two weeks um, that you ended up getting with him in good health based on the protocol that you were following. Um, was there a specific event that cropped up? Like I know with my own two dogs that I have, um, the decision's been in my hands and I've, I've helped them humanely for, from the world. Uh, both of those dogs, there was a very specific incident that in my mind I knew, excuse me, I knew it was so out of character for those dogs that I knew that was the time to make the decision. And with both of them, I made appointments immediately and took them in and, and you know, helped them from the world. Was there a specific moment with Rad or was it just that overarching feeling that you didn't want to lead back into the point where he was suffering and struggling to go to the bathroom? The, the moment was him suffering and struggling to go to the bathroom. Um, the most shocking part of um, his signs were uh, that bloody stool and the fact that he would strain for uh, so long. I mean, literally, and it was so cold and I felt so bad for him because his feet would get cold and he'd start to hitch. But um, it was um, it was that presentation and knowing how quickly he could slide downhill uh, after he was started to present with, with some of those things. Uh, that, that was the trigger. And at first... You know, they, we, we, we learn in um, the emergency service a lot about, uh, you know, the stages of grieving and, and uh, you go through the seven stages very quickly when you are re-experiencing something like when you hear that diagnosis that your dog is, has cancer or maybe it's some other um, disorder that they have that's terminal. Um, and you 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 treat them and you uh maybe you get them back maybe you just provide supportive care but you reach that point where you think that 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 trigger event where you think a decision i need to make a decision right now and we spend a lot of time um talking about it i don't know how many times i said to kale i can't believe it's him i can't believe he's the one that got sick because he was so uh so healthy and, and young and uh i would i would often follow that with it's going to be so hard when it's time and it it certainly was but that when again that that specific event when he he began to have bloody stool and started to strain i knew that i that that I, that we needed to make that choice right so um with there being the two of you, you know, being joint in making this decision, were you both on the same page with it? You know, we, I, because I, uh, because I have had, um, so many experiences dealing with families, uh, in, in, in end of life situations, I knew that we needed to communicate a lot during the two weeks, uh, or, or three or whatever, I guess it was three weeks. Um, 
before we had to euthanize Rad, I knew that we really needed to be on the same page. It was so important that neither of us, um, you know, had any resentment that the choice needed to be made, that we were both in agreement that the, the, the choice needed to be made. And it wasn't, that was more difficult than you might think. You know, we, there were times when, uh, you know, Kale would, we, she just wasn't ready. She wasn't, she wasn't ready. And I had, I had to respect that. Uh, I, I had to, uh, you know, I had to, you know, sit down with her and, and rad and, and just, you know, we would talk about some of the things that, uh, we, we would do with him and all the funny, you know, also all, all those things that you, you, you remember, uh, in these situations. And, uh, I, th I think her experience with dogs and dog training and the, um, her experience with her own, uh, with her dogs in the past going through this, she has, she, she has a very clear understanding of, you know, this situation and, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this choice that needs to be made. And th that was something that was helpful for me. I, I'm often in a role where I am, I need to be the person to, who, who consoles the, the people that are, uh, you know, upset, you know, telling, telling someone that their family member didn't make it, uh, when we're treating them, um, is challenging, but it was hard being on the other side of that for me. Uh, but you know, Kale was really good about, uh, just opening the dialogue, ha talking about whatever, whether it was a funny situation or, you know, the, um, that we had with Rad or it was uh, something that, um, it was something that, uh, you know, uh, specific to this three week period that was challenging for us to get over. It was, it was hard, but because of that conversation, the dialogue was open. It was, uh, it was, um, it was therapeutic. Good. Good. I'm glad you guys were both on the same page. That's really tricky. That was one of the things that kept coming up in the Facebook post. And um, it hadn't really occurred to me that much because my own dogs are my dogs. And I always make the decision, even even with my partner right now, we've been together four years. But I mean, it, we would discuss, I'm sure, but the ultimate decision would always be mine. So that was a perspective that I hadn't really considered was um, trying to make sure that everybody was on the same page. And there was one comment from somebody on the Facebook page that said, I was ready, but my partner wasn't. So we had to wait another week. And then he saw what I had been seeing before. And I, I really thought that that would make things quite a bit more, either a lot easier if there was support and somebody on the same page or a lot more difficult if if you were not only fighting your own head versus heart, but also trying to convince somebody else to um, stop thinking with their heart and, and going more with their head. So I, I, I'm glad you guys were on the same page. That's really admirable for sure. It's uh, funny, that you, that sorry, it's, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt ahead. just for a second, but one of the, it's interesting because I went um, uh, herding sheep with uh, uh, during the time that uh, shortly after we uh, had euthanized rad maybe a week later or a week and a half later when herding sheep with one of our a couple of our other dogs and um the uh the owner of the sheep farm was uh, came out and was talking about how she was going to have to put her uh, eldest uh, cattle uh, i think it was an australian cattle dog i don't remember they have so many dogs but uh, i don't remember which one it was but she had was saying that it was she was really struggling because she her husband wasn't ready and um it's so funny when we use that word that they're ready. I don't think we're ever really ready to, uh, to make this choice. I, I, I think we need to sort of objectively make the decision and you won't be ready, but you need to sort of, uh, objectively choose for your dog that to, to, uh, you, to know that, that, that they aren't thriving, that they aren't well, that they aren't going to get better. And, uh, but I don't know if you're ever really ready. Yeah, I can't imagine that there's ever a point where you're thinking, I'm 100% on this decision. And on that note, I actually, when you started telling that story, I, you won't be able to see it unless you're watching the video podcast, but I started smiling because I thought you were going to tell the story about how you had started with Rad in sheep herding, and then you had um, gotten another sheep herding dog, and we're starting to learn more about that. So Rad ended up becoming one of Kale's main agility dogs. So I... Um, I wanted to take that opportunity to, to sort of celebrate Rad because he really short life, but what a great dog he was. He had a lot of accomplishments. Is there anything specific you wanted to highlight? Um, I think that um, 
he uh, he was he my first border collie. Um, he introduced me to um, a lot of. He taught me so much, and uh, he introduced me to sheep herding, which uh, I've fallen in love with, and I uh, I do on a regular basis now with a, with another dog of ours. After I did hand off Rad to Kale. Because um, I had a, I was also training him in dog agility, and uh, I re I realized very quickly that he was he had more potential than I was ready to um, really uh, nurture. I guess maybe would be, and and Kale could do a lot more with him than I could, and uh, I handed off the reins to Kale in his uh, with his agility career. But I I think the thing that really stands out in my mind is. He, in my, you know, certainly no dog is ever perfect, but his balance of being um, a great lap dog, as well as being an athlete, as well as, you know, being a dog who just always made good choices. I, I have never had a dog that was like that. And he, he was, he was that dog. He would make good choices. He was good with our pack. He was, uh, a tremendous athlete and um he uh you know he really he really did change my life and, and he sort of changed um a lot of things for me introduced me to new people new things and uh you know i often talk about this on our uh, all of our social platforms i, I say it's amazing you know we never really know we we never pretend to understand the course of our life but but we need to be really grateful for the people and the animals that change the course of that life. Uh, Rad introduced me to some incredible things and people, and uh, I will forever be grateful for that. You know, he, he had the potential to uh, to be a world team competitor uh, next year. He was doing really, really well in, in dog agility. And, uh, you know, not that that changes uh, anything, but it was I couldn't be more proud of him. I couldn't be more proud of he and Kale. Um, I think of a uh, a, a, a vlog that we created last year you know, for the YouTube channel, and um, Kale uh, comes off the course, and Rad was, you know, pretty fairly new, still green, and uh, Kale comes off course in tears because she was so happy at how Rad had performed that he was that he was successful in a gamblers that you know people were struggling to get or whatever, but um, you know I will. I'm so happy that I recorded that because I can look back on it and um, I can, you know, re immediately connect with the kind of uh, the kind of emotion that that uh, that he would bring to us because he was just such a sweet dog uh, who was capable of, of so much and certainly gone too young. I did uh, come across that video just a few days ago, and of course I watched it tearily. And uh, I spent about a week living with Rad when you guys went to Florida one year right. he came and stayed with Reggie and I. And um, what a great guy, you know, he, intact male, and Reggie was still an intact male at that point. And the two of them just got along thick as thieves. And, you know, he had such goofy antics. I really enjoyed my time with Rad. So yeah. I'm very, very sorry that he's gone so young. Yeah, um, I, I just I had one that. final question and sorry. No, I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate it. We, I'm in such a, an amazing place that, uh, you know, I'm surrounded by people who, uh, care. I'm surrounded by people who can really understand it. And that's something that, um, I think our listeners can really benefit from, you know, there's so the people that you meet, the other dog owners, uh, that, you know, uh, you know, really understand how important our dogs are they really understand the, the unique position that they hold in our lives and they are uh they're good people to reach out to and talk to about how you're feeling and, and the impact that something like this can have um and i am really lucky to have access to you know all of our amazing instructors and people who really uh, see dogs the way i do um you know so uh, kale and i are really lucky to have access to that uh, that sort of support system Definitely. And it's so comforting when you need that comfort to know that the people surrounding you, you know, your coworkers, the clients here, they all have that same intense drive to be with their dogs and do things with their dogs and, and love their dogs. And it's so 
it's so it's so much of a community feel around here when any one of us lose a dog because we all we all know the feelings so well we've all been there there's probably very few of us here that have not experienced that just yet so on that note my last uh my last question i wanted to ask you was i know that there's probably a lot of there's so much intense feeling about rad being gone um but separating yourself as much as possible from the feeling do you have any regrets from uh, from the medical standpoint of making the decision to euthanize him are you are you really at peace with that decision that it was 100 percent the right decision uh i i think that's a really important question and um i I am 100% confident in uh, the course of action that uh, that uh, we took. Um, it's easy to uh, to what if every all of these kinds of situations, and uh, you know you can't help but but you know maybe you know did was it too early? I mean, it's so easy to think back on that, but again, you know, I'm sort of leaning on a lot of my um, my my background in my past you know, that isn't going, that, that what if isn't going to help or change anything. Um, and I, I do think it's really important to talk to your vet, to, to talk to your friends about maybe the decision, the, the decision that you, that you need to make. Ultimately, you are the one who makes that decision and you do need to be confident in, in making that choice because you've got to live with it. You know, it, it, it's one of these events in life that can't be undone. And uh, you, you sort of need to come to terms with that. And the best thing that you can do is prepare for it. You know, near near as you near those those last few days, really understanding of the choice you've got to make. Um, certainly for me and Kaylin, as I mentioned before, the communication, talking about it and talking about how hard it was going to be was a, a way to prepare prepare ourselves a little bit. But I, I don't think um, it's really it's it's really important to um, not what if the situation in, in cases like this, because uh, there is no value you can take from that. And it's not going to allow you to begin to heal. I'll see I'll see uh, a commercial on YouTube or something. I'll see a commercial somewhere and it'll trigger a memory for me of rad. And it, it's amazing how I'm taken back to the sadness of the, you know, of, of taking him to the vet for, 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 uh, for him to be euthanized. I'll immediately reconnect with those moments or I'll see, uh, some, you know, something, uh, on a TV or whatever. And I'll, uh, remember a time with him that, uh, or, or, or just how he made me feel. It doesn't even need to be a specific event, but like that connection of that you ha that we have with our dogs, that um, that that amazing, um, uh, you know, uh, that excitement that we have when they learn something new. That 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 moment where we feel so genuinely proud of a choice that they've made, and uh, I'll be taken back to that moment. And it's uh, I've still I mean it's been a, a, a couple of few weeks now, and I'll still have those those moments. Um, but I don't, I don't, I regret the, the fact that it happened, but I don't regret the choices that I made. Um, and I think that's a really healthy way to approach it because it, it allows you to, it allows you to come to terms with it and, uh, whatever your coping mechanisms might be and, and, and your plans for, uh, you know, moving on, um, uh, it allows you to sort of move in that direction. Yeah, and so important to get there and find that peace. And I find that, you know, over time, those memories that um, that trigger you to think about the end and the sadness, I tr I'm, I work hard to do this, um, but I try to replace them with something happy, some sort of celebration from the dog's life. So rather than, you know, thinking about missing Tyler, for example, and something reminds me of him, I will try to think of you know, the wonderful goofiness that he had about him to, to change that. Not so that I'm not acknowledging the grief, but so that I can move on from it and so that I can get to that healthy place of peace. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it's so vitally important. You know, the, the, the uh, there, there's a, a saying, it, it sort of escapes my mind now, but the, uh, the greatest misfortune is that dogs live much shorter lives than we do, you know? So when you're, when you, uh, 
get a dog, you get a puppy, uh, you at some point you may have to make this decision and uh it's something that you just that just comes with being a dog owner um so you know Somebody i think this posted is a, on that oh i'm go sorry ahead. go ahead uh, well i, I just I, say, I think it's something that's that's really important to for people to 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 understand is that you you there's a really good chance that you may have to make this decision one day and although it yeah. shouldn't you know be on, to on top of your mind it's an understanding that you have that you must provide this dog with the most amazing life that you can and part of that may be having to euthanize them Definitely. Um, somebody had posted on that Facebook, uh, on the Facebook post that dogs will provide you with some of the best days of your life and one of the worst days of your life. So I'm sorry that you had to experience that. And, you know, Rad was a great dog. So for, um, for people listening, the, the things that you should look for with your dog, you know, quality of life, and we've talked a lot about that in this podcast, quality of life is so important. If they are struggling at all, it really begs the question, is it time to let them go? And I, I told a story in the blog post about my mother and a cat that I grew up with until I was probably, you know, nine or 10 years old. And I think she waited too long to euthanize Sam. And I understand that on, on a heart level at this point in my life, but I also understand that it was unfair to Sam for those last six or so months of her life. She really wasn't, wasn't in a state where she could take care of herself. And because my mom had great medical help for her and my mom was very diligent about bringing her to the food bowl every day and cleaning up after her when she had accidents in the house because she couldn't contain her bladder anymore, Sam survived a little bit longer than she should have. But that was such a, uh, an important life lesson, I think, for me watching that. And, you know, even then I, I had a very strong opinion of it, but I didn't know how to express that to my mother to try to open that communication. As you said, I was too young to try to help her through that, but it really shone a light on my own life and, and my life with my dogs and moving forward. So I have that in the back of my head that I always think about with quality of life and who the animal is still here for. You know, that, that cat was still here because my mother couldn't let her go yet. And like I said, I understand that on a, on a heart level, but it, if you ask that clear question, you know, is this animal still here because they're having a good quality of life or is this animal still here because I can't bring myself to let them go yet? I think that will give you a very, very good answer about when the right time is. I also think it's really important to open the line of communications with your vet. And as you said, you had a great support system in your vet with lots of, you know, really good and really detailed information about what the prognosis was and what the chances were and what rad was going to experience over the next few weeks few months so if you have a confusion about this decision talk to your vet you know any good vet is going to be able to sit down and talk to you and help you make this decision i remember with tyler when i when i asked my vet you know i think this is i think we're getting close to the time if this next try doesn't work I think I may have to consider euthanasia. And I remember very clearly her saying I would 100% support that. And she was supportive of me trying that final protocol. Um, and she was also 100% supportive of me euthanizing. So getting that answer, I think, was a very, very important thing for me to be able to come around and know that this was unequivocally the right choice was to let Tyler go. So there's a very different, uh, there's a huge difference between living and being alive. And, um, you know, I see it all the time in people and that is, can be really defining when it comes to y y your dog, you know, are they, are they just are they alive because you are giving them all of this supportive care? You know, do you, it's, it's, it's so hard because we can't ask them. We, uh, we can't, how do you feel? You know, how, how is today? Uh, and we just want them to, our, your dog needs to thrive. They need to be able to, uh, you know, enjoy every day. Um, and I, I, I think and this is, you made such an important point because any of the any vets who are listening to our podcast it's the best thing you can do is give your your uh customers your your patients a really clear understanding of your opinion 
and it, it, you know hopefully it's as objective as it can be but don't don't be afraid to be a little subjective if it were me i would do this that's what i want to hear um, and our vet is so uh, we have this amazing veterinarian who has, you know, come to the house uh, on occasion to help us through a situation, like just really above and beyond, really uh, an amazing person. But I know, having had different vets in the past, I think maybe for some vets it's hard to, uh, you know, to tell someone that that maybe euthanasia, euthanasia is the right choice. It's hard to say that, but it is the best thing that you can do in if you believe that is the case. And um, I think for your, for your, uh, your customers and your patients, uh, you, you, it's important you let them know what, you, what your real opinion is um, because it will ultimately help them. And, and I think it was such an important point that you touched on uh, and I just wanted to sort of uh, to reiterate that. Yeah, that helped me more than anything in that scenario. Yeah, so um, I, I think uh, we should wrap on that. It's uh, I I, um, I hope this uh, I hope that if you've if you've stumbled onto this podcast uh, and you found this because you were looking for some guidance or some direction, I hope that you found this helpful. If if you are uh, one of our regular listeners, I appreciate you for for listening and, and, and hanging around it and uh, hope that it um, I hope that it helped to inform and, and educate as best we can but I'll, I'm gonna be honest it was so therapeutic for me just to talk about it and uh, I, I might be getting more out of this than than uh, than than uh, anyone else but uh, Shannon I, I want to thank you for um, uh, uh, organizing this and and sort of uh, asking uh, some really important questions because it was it was really helpful you're but, so welcome uh, if this is your first time on our YouTube podcast make sure you hit that subscribe button we publish new videos every week to help you understand the why behind how dogs think and learn uh, on that note I'm Ken and this is Shannon and happy training bye for now